My name's Stuart Makin and I'm a blacksmith. Blacksmithing is the process of getting steel or iron hot and hammering it with a hammer over an anvil until you get the shapes that you want. It's quite an old practice dating back a few thousand years. We use it today combined with modern techniques as well to reproduce things from history but also to create new pieces of art and design. There's a large range of items within the Staffordshire Hoard, some of which haven't even been identified and just identified as item of gold. A lot of items are sword fittings, sword pommels and cross guards. More unusually, there are some seax hilts. Seax is an Anglo-Saxon knife. It's the old English word for knife. The central motif for the sculpture is heavily inspired by one of the seax handles, the knife handles. It's a round element of gold with garnets fitted to it, and it would have made the upper part of a knife handle. So you, you unfold this out, and it was a pair of dragons, one above the other. Now, I wanted my sculpture to draw from the decorative elements of the Staffordshire Horde, but also to try and convey how a piece would have been made. So cloisonne, which is the process of setting stones into cells. So you form tiny little shapes, squares, circles, and you set a stone or a piece of enamel into it. I wanted to try and show that through the, sculpt the progression of the sculpture. So at the bottom, you have the outline chased into the steel. And as you move up, you have these cells that are cut out, the open sections. And as you move through to the top, it's completed. You have the red set against the gold and it just shows a pathway from beginning to completion of how they would have done this originally. During my original creative process, I surrounded myself with pictures of items from the Staffordshire Horde. By immersing yourself in it all the time, you begin to focus on the ones that you like best that, and you go through those 10 favourite pictures and you decide, what is it? What is it about this picture that I love so much? And once I'd discovered those elements, I then tried to piece them together into something that would convey my feeling of the Staffordshire Horde. I pick uh, the design from a knife handle, but I pick the, the, the eagle from a, a sword mount. And then you do sketches, I do full-size drawings, model making, and eventually you begin to piece together these jigsaw pieces until you stand back one day and you look at it and you go, that's great, that's it, that's what I need to make now, in full-size, in metal. The sculpture is quite large scale. It's two and a half meters tall by two meters wide. It's made of steel and this has been coated with a, a high pigment gold paint to try and replicate that, to get gold from the items in the Staffordshire Hoard. And the red elements are a red perspex. So you get that really interesting and striking color contrast. So I always wanted to maintain that. But being a blacksmith, my primary medium of work is through steel or iron. So that's what I know how to work, so that's what we went with. And also it's got a strength to it that's appropriate for an item this large, a visual strength as well. So you've got these four rearing eagles holding this central, almost like totem pole type motif in the center, but also a physical strength because um, something that tall, it needs to be able to support its own weight. I use a variety of tools from electric uh, to mechanical and manual tools. So we have hammers, anvils. We've got the forge, the old fashioned way of forming metal by getting it hot and hammering it. I'm doing a lot of cutting with grinders and dremels, but then the tidying is quite often done with hand files and chisels and things like that. I'll be using uh, taps and dies to construct things. I don't want to, I want to use as little electric welding as possible because it has a very obvious visual impact. I want to use hidden joints so you get these nice smooth lines in the sculpture, nothing interfering and breaking those lines up when it's fully constructed. I really, really hope that this piece is going to communicate the, the scale, the, the magnitude of importance of the Staffordshire Horde, what it tells us about the skills 
of these Anglo-Saxon craftsmen, their culture, you know, their wealth, their how they treat things um, in an almost ritual manner. The, dis the deliberate destruction of a lot of these items sort of implies that they were ritually killing the sword, taking away the sword's own personality. The theory is that that sword has been imbued by that person who owned it, so it, it itself has to be killed to remove that power. Throughout my training and my early years as a smith, I worked for other people making things they told me to make. I never had any creative input in what was being done. When I design things now, when I make things now, the passion behind it is mine, the driving force is mine. I'm not doing it just because I'm being paid. I love it because I see something through from design, through making, through completion. I, I get pleasure from every stage of that. And I can stand back after all the sweat and the blood and the tears and I can look at something that's finished and I go, I did that with my hands, like just normal human being hands. I, I did that. I took tools, I took metal in its bare form, I bent it and I shaped it and now it's done. And you get this sense of real achievement when you, when you create something with your own hands. Uh, I just think it's fantastic, you know, being able to, to make something from, from effectively nothing.